No more second chances. The truth behind narcissists' failed hoovering. Have you ever thought about what happens when a narcissist attempts to reconnect with you fail? Today, we're exploring the fascinating Hoover technique and what it signifies when these efforts don't work. If you find this topic relatable, please like, subscribe, and share it with others who might benefit. So, what is a Hoover? It's when a narcissist tries to assess whether you're open to reconnecting. They want to see if you're ready to talk, if you've made progress in your healing journey, and if you see through their facade. In essence, they're checking if you figured out their true nature and if you can maintain no contact. The Hoover is part of the cycle of narcissistic abuse, a repetitive loop designed to keep you trapped. Think of it like this. It starts with the love bombing phase, where they shower you with affection to win you over. Next comes the devaluation phase, during which they've deeply engaged you, followed by the inevitable end of the relationship. Either you've been discarded or you've chosen to leave. Now the Hoover is their attempt to restart this cycle and see if you're willing to engage again. If someone accepts this, they may feel validated, thinking, I really do matter. This person is giving me another chance. Let's delve deeper into this intriguing topic and examine what occurs when a Hoover fails. Stay tuned. Throughout the relationship, the narcissist was employing strategies to control and manipulate you. They created a cycle of devaluation, keeping you caught in a trauma bond, constantly longing for them, with their presence ever lingering in your thoughts. This behavior is their pattern. It was how they acted before, how they behave now, and how they'll treat others in the future. Narcissists exist in a low vibrational state, which I call a quasar state, even lower than the ground beneath you. Their aim is to pull you down to that same energy level. They accomplish this by entering your life, whether as a partner, friend, colleague, or someone within your social circle. They attach themselves to you, closely observing what makes you tick, learning every detail. Once they feel they know enough about you, the devaluation starts. This is when the smear campaign begins, as they work to create rifts between you and everything important to you. Your time, energy, love, empathy, and trust. Nothing is off-limits. Narcissists thrive on draining these resources while sowing chaos. They show no concern for anyone but themselves, feeding their ego and dark energy without genuine care for others. However, when their attempts to re-engage you or hoover you back in fail, a shift occurs. You've gone no contact, blocked them, and removed their enablers from your life. Your world has slowed down, giving you room to breathe and reflect. Now, it's time to recognize that this was the relationship that deeply wounded you, the one that almost broke you. It can be hard for many to grasp the manipulation and toxicity involved, but narcissists are fully aware of their actions. They know the void inside them, the emptiness driving their behavior, and the hollowness that characterizes their low vibrational state. Deep-rooted anxiety and insecurity fuel narcissists. They constantly strive to control, manipulate, and tug at people's emotions. They aim to ensnare others in their web, using charm or guilt to coax them into giving one more chance. That's what a Hoover is. But eventually, like many others, you reached a breaking point. You realized, I can't keep going through this cycle. I've returned once, twice, maybe even more times, and each time things get worse. The mask slips more with every return revealing just how little this person values me. In the past, you may have cut contact only to break it and return to the same destructive pattern. That might have been your situation, but I hope you've progressed beyond that now. Regardless of where you stand, know that you're being guided through this process, and you're not alone. If you found yourself repeatedly blocking and unblocking the narcissist, you may have unintentionally communicated that your resolve wasn't as strong as you thought. This is precisely what the narcissist depends on. They excel at keeping multiple people in their toxic orbit, trapping them in confusion and doubt. If you believe it was only you, especially in a romantic context, think again. A narcissist feeds off anyone willing to provide them with supply, whether through romance, friendship, or even casual acquaintances. Your connection's nature didn't matter. 
they were likely involved in activities behind your back that you knew nothing about. Even when they were physically present, their minds often drifted elsewhere, likely glued to one of their devices. You might have sat beside them, hoping for quality time, only to face silence or distant indifference. Go ahead, keep watching the movie, they might say, all while scrolling through their phone, completely disengaged. What you thought were moments of connection were actually acts of daily, weekly, and monthly devaluation. But here's the silver lining. When a narcissist's Hoover attempt fails, it marks a turning point for you. It's a sign that you've finally taken control by maintaining no contact for good. The illusion they created is shattered, and you can no longer unsee the truth. The person you dealt with is profoundly toxic. You've witnessed behaviors you never thought you'd accept and experienced situations you never imagined possible. It's hard to reconcile how someone who appears so successful and composed publicly could be so emotionally immature and dysfunctional privately. They behave childishly, throwing things, slamming doors, breaking furniture, and hurling items at walls. Many dealing with a narcissist find themselves locking their bedroom doors or hiding in guest rooms to escape the chaos. If your once passionate relationship has morphed into one where you feel more like roommates, you understand the struggle. That environment was never safe, and the narcissist was fully aware of it. This brings to mind the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde analogy. You were always on edge, unsure of who would come through the door. This ongoing uncertainty made you feel like you had to walk on eggshells, leading to a gradual loss of your authentic self. Your identity faded into the background, becoming merely an extension of the narcissist. You found yourself caught in the confusion and chaos they created. This is why accepting a Hoover, an attempt to reel you back in, is never a smart move. It only drives you back into a toxic cycle. You might ask yourself, have they truly changed this time? What's going on with them now? Is therapy really helping? Let me save you the trouble. Narcissists don't change. They just adjust their personas to lure you back from more manipulation or target someone new who isn't aware of their behavior. As narcissists age, they often decline. They turn into what you might call aging narcissists, which isn't a pretty sight. Their charm diminishes as their physical appeal fades and more people begin to see through their facade. In the past, understanding narcissism was limited to local gossip and news, leaving many unaware of its true nature. Now, as we approach the end of the year, more people are becoming self-aware and empowered. They realize that putting their well-being first is crucial and that narcissists no longer belong in their lives. After too many chances and too long in a toxic relationship, you finally block them and cut all ties. So how does the narcissist react? They may attempt to reconnect with a Hoover, sending emails saying they miss you or using trivial excuses like needing an old item you left at their place years ago. What they really want is to keep any possible connection. As long as they can reach you, they'll try to call, text, email, or send someone to stir things up. They thrive on disturbing your peace. Your time and energy are valuable and meant for you, not for someone who will drain them. The narcissist is like a parasite, looking for someone to rely on for emotional support while pretending to have it all together. Narcissists are skilled at manipulation. They know how to charm people, play the blame game, and guilt others into compliance. If someone returns to their life, the cost of reopening that door is higher than before. The moment they sense any opportunity, they'll push through, and you'll end up paying the price for not keeping it closed. That's why I consistently emphasize going no contact, block, delete, and remove them completely from your life. When a Hoover attempt fails, it can lead to what's known as a narcissistic injury. While I don't advocate for intentionally hurting anyone, this term describes how narcissists react when they don't get their way. In these moments, they're at a disadvantage, giving you the upper hand. The goal isn't to hurt anyone. It's about protecting yourself and focusing on your growth, ensuring you become the best version of yourself. If going no contact is the best route, then I strongly recommend it in nearly all my discussions. Rejecting a narcissist's attempts to reconnect, especially when they're feeling vulnerable, 
is crucial for maintaining your peace. By ignoring their emails and sticking to your boundaries through no contact, you prevent their efforts from succeeding. Simply deleting that email can be a powerful step. Why is this important? You don't need to know what the narcissist is thinking or who they're with, and you definitely don't owe them another chance. They've already had more than enough. You've experienced their manipulation, responding to their demands while they exploited your emotions. If you've ever allowed a Hoover in the past, you understand the struggle. That's why it's essential to stop giving in to these attempts. When the narcissist's efforts ultimately fail, it's a victory for you. You can reflect on how you used to fall for their lies and how, now, you refuse to be trapped again. Your awareness and empowerment have grown. You recognize that their promises were merely manipulative tactics to keep you engaged in a toxic cycle. Moving forward means using the lessons learned from that past relationship to shape your present without dwelling on the future. If you're happy where you are, that's fantastic. But if you're not where you want to be, it's time for growth. To get to that desired place, especially if you feel stuck, you must go no contact. It's time to stop giving the narcissist any more chances and reject every Hoover, regardless of how they present it. Whether they feign a health crisis, offer money, or try to involve their children. It's all manipulation. You now see clearly what these individuals are truly about. They lack depth and aim to keep others entangled in their web of confusion. While they may have held you captive before, you've broken free, and now you're either healing or indifferent, no longer affected by their presence. Consider the Hoover for what it is. A desperate, half-hearted attempt by the narcissist. Think back to how the relationship ended. If you were discarded, I truly sympathize. Remember how they treated you during that time, what they said or didn't say, and how they left things unresolved. They intended to inflict pain, and yes, it hurt. But you emerged stronger and more informed about narcissism, which is why you're here seeking knowledge and insight. That's a positive takeaway. The narcissist underestimated your resilience. They didn't believe you could rebuild yourself and rise anew, but you've proven them wrong. You now recognize your worth and know they don't deserve your energy or the details of your life. You were the best thing in their life, and they know it. That's why they try to draw you back in. They long for the value you brought and want to keep you trapped in that endless cycle. Their hoovering is merely a pathetic tactic, revealing their weakness as they try to regain control. Whether it's an adult child reaching out for money or using any familiar excuse, it's all manipulation. They will attempt to exploit your feelings of guilt, banking on your history of support to keep you playing their game. This is why you must never give them a second chance. They will always be takers, and you must firmly establish your boundaries to prevent them from crossing them again. Even a small opening can allow them back in, and once they are, they will drain you anew. You must be the one to walk away. Don't even consider going back. Instead, focus on nurturing healthier relationships, whether platonic or romantic, where your needs are respected and your voice matters. This is essential for everyone. Don't let the Hoover pull you back into their trap. You've gained the knowledge and clarity about narcissism and are on your way to becoming the best version of yourself. Remember, when you prioritize yourself and stay committed to your path, you can achieve anything you desire. Thank you for taking the time to listen today.